understand an important topic of epigenetics. Now, genetics, we all know. Actually, inheriting something from your parents, from your grandparents, and that's what? Simply, it's the genes. But epigenetics opens the avenues behind genes or besides genes. So what does it say? It says that there is behavior and environment that actually modifies the gene. And this process is reversible. You can come back to the original genetic makeup that you imbibe or remain with the new, um, new changes in the gene which are because of the behavior, because of the environment. Now, there are germs which can change the epigenetic. Cancer can also bring in mutations and can change the epigenetics. So BRCA1 gene is one such example for diagnosing some kinds of specific cancers like breast cancer. Also, uh, a mother uh, can actually, through the food habits, transfer that to the child uh, when the child is in the womb. So there is where we bring in the concept of epigenetics. Now, under the epigenetics we understand three important things which is dna methylation histone modification and non-coding rna so let's talk about first dna methylation dna methylation that means you are adding a chemical group to the dna so let's say this is a dna and a chemical group attaches to the dna now when the group is being attached to a specific place or a position it blocks the protein that attaches to the DNA to read the gene. And this process is what is called as demethylation. So demethylation actually turns off the gene and methylation turns on the gene. So that's one thing. The next is histone modification. Now when we say histone modification, the DNA wraps around a protein. Now, when the histones are tightly packed, you cannot read the gene. Uh, genes access uh, the DNA very easily, right? And that's where we understand that if there is a modification in the histone, it would be a turning signal uh, for the gene as on and off. So again, histone modification is the second criteria. And the next is the non-coding RNA. Now DNA is a uh, is an instruction which is used for making coding and non-coding RNA. So coding RNAs uh, make the protein and the non-coding RNA helps in the expression of the gene. So I can say it's the coding and the non-coding RNA. The coding RNA, as we said, makes the protein and the non-coding RNA actually helps in the expression of the gene. Now, when it is the non-coding RNA which is helping in the expression of the gene, again, the turning on and the off would actually affect the genetic makeup. And therefore, it's really important whether the genes would be turned on and off based on the non-coding GNA. Now, epigenetic changes can occur due to various things. For example, with the development, so even when the child is born prior to that, there can be epigenetic development and that could be because of the mother's diet. Uh, if the diet is healthy and that diet goes to the child in the womb, then the development could have epigenetic changes. The second is the age. Now, as you age, right, the epigenetics change. So at a younger age, you have millions of sites. However, as you grow old, the sites are reduced. So a middle-aged person would be somewhere in between, right? The next is reversibility. As I mentioned in the very beginning, epigenetics, when we talk about, brings in changes. And that's because of the behavior and the environment. Now, this can be reversible, this can be irreversible. But it's usually reversible. For example, a smoker actually has a change in the AHRR gene and now when there is a change in the gene, when the person stops smoking or reduces the smoking, there is a reversible change and that's because of the behavior of the environment. So therefore, we understand that epigenetics change and the factors that affect the change are development, age and reversibility. So this was a very important topic. In case you have any questions or queries, feel free to connect back. Thanks for joining us.